Well, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be, we're going to start the program again uh, right now, and uh, we have an interesting uh, topic we're going to be discussing: a cross-cultural marketing. Uh, in, the, in talking about the real estate industry, and um, it's significant because one of our, our sponsors today, NAREP, Association. National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. That's, that's the, uh, so we, we were discussing um, their sponsorship and then we thought about a, a topic we could discuss and uh, we decided to do this cross-cultural marketing. But uh, anyway, so, so I, asked, I asked Andy a question. I said, Andy, if you're a Latino, if you recruited a Latino uh, a real estate um, person, is that the only market he's going to sell to? Is, is that his destiny? So you're Hispanic, so I'm going to reach Hispanics. Or I'm Asian, so my market's Asian, and that's where I'm going to go. And I said, is that, is that what's happening in the industry now? Because if you're a Latino and, you're, and that's the only market, how do you expand? How do you grow? And if you decide, to sell to the whole community as a whole, are you ready for those cultural changes? Selling, selling to Hispanic versus selling to Anglo's versus selling to Asians. And that's how we came to reach an agreement about doing this presentation. Because nobody wants to be limited in, in the real estate industry, do they? They want to be able to sell to everybody. Wouldn't you want to? Eh? But, 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 then, but then there's obstacles, and then you have to know the cultures. And, um, and Steve's going to talk a little bit about maybe having a, a lifelong agency of selling to the, only selling to the general market. And now when you have your team meetings, you're looking at St. Paul being 50% multicultural. And you've got to ask yourself the question, the owner of the agency, what are we going to do with those folks? How do we reach them? What do we do? And, and uh, that's been the genesis of Hispanic marketing. When, when the corporate America started asking those questions about years ago about the Hispanic market, how do we learn how to do that? That's going to be our conversation. The leader off is uh, Isaac Contreras, who just finished um, uh, a presidency of, of NAREP, and he's going to lead off our discussion. And Isaac is a up and coming, I just I think he just reached one of the one of the higher uh, million dollar sales of, for Keller Williams. Yeah, yeah brother. Did okay. Yeah, <laughs> brother, you doing all right? Yeah, it's I'm all doing good. All right. Okay, Isaac Contreras, folks. <laughs> no, Isaac. <clears throat> Thank you. Appreciate the uh, the opportunity, always, Rick. Um, yeah, I've been attending a few years, and my name is Isaac Contreras. I'm a Keller Williams agent here in the Twin Cities, and I'm also uh, the past president of NAREP, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. And uh, the opportunity and, and, and the question, to answer that question, uh, is a huge opportunity, right? Because being able to cross culture, uh, in, or being able to cross the cultural markets is a big deal, right? I've, I'm born and raised here in the St. Paul area, uh, actually right up the hill. I'm a West Sider. I know there's a few West Siders in here. I played football on that field right there. So this is home, right? Feels good, um, but home is changing. And so is business and understanding that and being able to understand that to answer the question is can an agent who looks like me walk into a community, sell in that community, but what if that community is not feeding me? What if it's not strong enough to be able to support my business or my business aspirations? Can I cross into the general market, into the non-Hispanic community, uh, into the non-Hispanic market? And so that was kind of the question. And then the, the, vice, uh, the other side of that is, can someone who's, ne who's never worked in that community, who is Caucasian, find the opportunity, cross that culture, and still be relevant and provide that trust, that ethical work that uh, 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 consistent work, right? So that was kind of the question that spurred uh, some of the information that I want to talk to you about in regards to marketing. Um, so I'm going to share some data points 
um, because for me, you know, the numbers always tell a story. And for everybody, the numbers are always going to tell a different story. But I think at the end, it'll, it'll come to three different questions to ask when you're marketing, how do you answer those three different questions? Uh, so the first, uh, let's see if I know how to work this. The first question, well, the, or the first piece of information is to understand home ownership by rate, right? So for the last, uh, uh, since 2019, you're going to see that white Americans, the home ownership rate is 72.1. The uh, Latino American is 60, or I'm sorry, the Asian American is 61%. So that gap is cl there, but it's, cl it's closing every year. The other one is Hispanic Americans at 51.1%. And that's been a trend for the last seven years that is constantly getting, uh, that gap is closing, right? So it's a seven year trend. Nationally, it's 51%. Um, here in the Minnesota market, it's about just over 48% and approaching 50 pretty quickly. All right, so this is a question, this is a piece of information that's important in the marketing standpoint. Who do I market to, right? The other one is, the last one is the black American is at 43%. Now, one of the funny things about this piece here, and not funny, um, one of the interesting pieces here is that depending on the market that you're in, it moves up slightly or it drops significantly. Okay? Here in the Twin Cities, here in Minneapolis, we have the worst home ownership rate for the black American in the country. Depending on which study you look at, it's somewhere between 23 and 25 percent. That's horrible. There's a lot of work to be done, but that's the opportunity that can be, that, that if you look at it properly, that's the opportunity, right? Now, there's a trend that I picked up, and I'll share with you the resources that I used, uh, but there's a trend here. Well, there's, a, there's some information here that I'm hoping is a trend in the black home ownership rate. In, 20, in 2019, the black home ownership rate was 40%, just over 40%, okay, nationally. In 20, and that was the second quarter of 2019. In 2020, in, in 2019 it was 40%. In 2020, it jumped to 45%. So that was a significant jump. And I'm hoping that that's a trend that we're going to see. And so if we continue to see this information when it comes out for 2021, that we see that trend continue to go up when we get the Sheba report. And if that's there, that's an opportunity, right, as a marketer. Uh, but these, these are interesting pieces of information here uh, to understand who you're going to market to. So I want to talk about denial, right, because being able to buy a home, there's the flip side of that, not being able to buy a home, right? And there's two factors that tend to kind of be the ones that drive that denial rate. And you'll see that uh, the application has been rejected significantly more between with the black American and the Hispanic Latino, right, compared to the Asian Pacific Islander and the white Caucasian, right? There's a 3% difference in that denial rate, higher denial rate, right? But the couple of factors that are actually leading to that, one is the debt to income ratio, and the second one is the low credit score. And you can see here with the AAPI community and the white community, it's at 10 and 18%. But super high as far as low credit score between the black and the Hispanic community. The opportunity there is educational, right? What is a credit score? What do I do with the credit score? If I have the right information and our lenders can the lenders in the room can attest to this. If I have a ready, the correct information, if I have the right guidance, I can flip that low credit score inside of six months, right, in most cases. And it's a lack of education. Hey, I did this. I don't know what to do with it anymore, so I just kind of forget about it. And then when it's time to go look, I don't know what to do about it. So with the right information, the right education, and that's the marketing opportunity there. If you're trying to market to the black community to buy a home, if you're looking to market to the uh, Hispanic community to buy a home and make sure that they get pre-approved, this low credit score, this is what you want to uh, educate them on. Provide that education. If your material is going out there and it's saying, 
Can't, do you know if you can? <laughs> right? And you're able to address and answer that pain point. This is an opportunity here, and the numbers are clear. Debt to income, we see that that's, but that's pretty typical, right? We don't know how much we make. Is it, is, is, am I going to be able to buy enough house? Is it where I want it to be at? But these are the two factors, and here in the black community and the Hispanic community, there's an opportunity there to be able to market with education to close that gap and gain that market share. Okay? Big piece there. But there are some things that I want you to think about when you're thinking about us, right? When you're thinking about the different, when you're thinking about the multicultural groups, whether you're moving out of one significant one, let's say you're a Latino American, you're working in the uh, Latino American community, and you want to move into the Caucasian community, or you want to move into and, and get some market share in the Asian community. Some things to think about. Latinos are predicted to account for 70% of new homeowners for the next 20 years. Now, I'm going to say that again, <laughs> right, because of how significant that is. 70% of all new home ownership for the next 20 years. That's an entire career that you can build your business model around. Okay? What if they're wrong? What if it's the prediction's wrong by 10%? Right? That's still pretty significant. What if it's wrong by five years? That's still significant. You can build a model around that. You can build a, a, a marketing plan around that. Okay? Here's another statistic that I thought was very significant, right? And it kind of tailors or it kind of addresses where the my marketing question will come up later. But 62.8%, according to the U.S. Census Bureau that we just had recently, 62.8% of the U.S. Latino is born here in the United States, right? It matched up with the survey, uh, um, the results of uh, uh, the, the, the base that Carlos had when I looked and he pulled up the research and he pulled up the study group. I saw that that matched up there. The other uh, community that's, that's here, and has high percentages, higher than I expected, was the Asian community. The Asian community is 57, just over 57% are U.S. born. And that's significant because if you turn on the news for more than five seconds, right, that is not portrayed that way. For the Latino community and for the Asian community, we are portrayed as perpetual foreigners, right? We're, we're, we're not from here, right? But when you see the numbers and you recognize that products that you're putting out there have to change, especially over the last 10 years, because when we look at uh, the home ownership rate, back to this, back to this slide here, where did I go? Oops, wrong way, wrong way. Verdad? <laughs> <laughs> When you look at this home ownership rate, you're wondering who's buying? Who are these folks that are buying? And it's not, uh, like I said, that, that, that perpetual foreign or piece. These folks are getting products that maybe credit isn't the issue. Maybe uh, 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 um, being able to get documentation isn't the issue, right? They actually have everything that they need. They just need that education gap to be filled, right? So there's opportunity there. Um, so U.S. born Latinos account for 62.8% and that's co consistently growing. Um, the Spanish language prevalence. Now this was a study that was done by NAREP and asking their top producers about their Latino buyers, right? And this piece here, Spanish language prevalence dropped 13%, okay, from 2020. And that's a significant piece because um, one of, the, one of the things that we've learned from past marketing conferences, Dr. Jake Benefla was pointing out that 80% of Spanish dominant uh, uh, advertising is lost on the Latino millennial, right? And the Latino millennial is the largest group right now. They're in prime home buying years, right? On average, the Latino is 14.7 years younger than their white counterpart, right? We're in our prime home buying years. So if you're going under the uh, uh, assumption, if your marketing dollars are going towards 
Spanish dominant advertising and you're trying to target the prime home buyer, you're missing the mark by 80%. Okay? And that's significant, right? Um, that's a big piece. All right. And then another piece here that I want to point out, Asian American median household income is $93,000. That's up 35% than the national average, right? So they have more money to be able to spend on homes. And as a result, we're seeing that their average loan amounts are higher than they've been before, okay? $412,000 on the purchase side, $450,000 on the refi side. That's the opportunity there, right? A couple other things to think about in the black community, and this is where I think that there is an opportunity too, there's opportunity as well. Even though we're seeing the lowest home ownership rate here in the Twin Cities, right? Even though we see that the black community is at the lowest home ownership rate among all the demographics, right? We're seeing that bump come up from 2019 to 2020, right? The black millennials contributed to more than 2% of the increase in home ownership. And that's significant because they are 30, have a 33% increase in applications, okay, between 2018 and 2019. That's recent compared to 14 among white millennials. That message there, that piece of information there, what that tells me is that our black millennials have gained confidence, right? And the white millennials have lost that confidence. But this is a confidence piece here, just to apply for a loan. Just to say, hey, I'm gonna take the step and I'm gonna put my name on a piece of paper and let's run the numbers. That's a confidence piece. And so you're looking at a, a, a demographic, a segment of that demographic that's showing confidence, regardless of the obstacles. There's always obstacles, right? We can look at any of the numbers and we can go look at studies, we can find the covenants, we can find all the racial disparities, all of that piece there. But what are you doing when you get those obstacles? Here, we're showing confidence, right? So there's an opportunity there when you're marketing to be able to target a specific segment of the population that has confidence now, right? And so what does that mean dollar-wise, right? What does that mean as far as the business, being able to grab that business and who are you grabbing it to? When you put all that, all that information together as far as having a good credit score, having the debt to income ratio that's needed, having the loan products that are available to you, all of these things like that, and, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, in my, in, when I wanna move from one market to the other, I'm looking for mortgage ready uh, 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 people, right? Here, we're showing that uh, in, the, in the Asian, in the AAPI community, 57%, or I'm sorry, in the non-Hispanic white community, no, no, I'm sorry, AAPI, 57% are mortgage ready, right? That's real marketing opportunity. That's real market share opportunity. That for every six out of 10 Asian American folks that you run into, they're ready, to, mortgage ready means they got the credit score, they got the income, they can buy, that opportunity is there. So when you're moving from one community to another, one cultural community to another, there's opportunity there. Then you see the non-Hispanic white at 34%, and then you see the uh, Latino community at 32%. Now 32%, given that there's 62 million Latinos in the United States, that's a pretty significant number, right? There's at least 4.8 million that they've looked at that are mortgage ready. 4.8 million pieces of business. Good question. Is this is your denominator include people who already have a mortgage, or is it just people? correct? Yep. So it includes people who have a, who have a correct, okay. correct, and ready for move up, okay. right? So not just not just first time home buyers. This is not just first time home buyers. These are folks that are ready to move up as well. And then in the black community, you got 20 percent. And you notice this trend changing from 20 to 21. It's didn't, it didn't drop. Because if we were to take this number, I bet if we were to take this number, these data points all the way back to 2008 and include 2008, 9, and 10, that number would drop significantly. Because what happened in 8, 9, and 10? We had the housing bubble, right? So many people lost their homes. Well, it looks to me like lessons have been learned, right? We've learned how to stay mortgage ready. 
So this is the opportunity here. These are millions and millions of people just within these segments that have the opportunity, that are able to uh, uh, purchase a house because they have the credit, they have the income, they have the stability, um, the employment history, things like that. So this is when you ask that question of can I as a Latino move out of the Latino market, which tradition, you know, is something that I feel comfortable in, can I move out of that and still be able to gain market share? Or if I'm uh, uh, Mr. Larry over here who's traditionally done uh, business in the white community, can I take some of this market share in the Latino community because it's 70% for the next 20 years? The answer is yes. The opportunity is there, you just gotta market. And here's the reason why, or here's the three questions that I kind of came out of when I was reading this information, when I was going through my research. Um, the three questions that came out to be able to successfully capture the market share in, some of, in each of these, each of these uh, demographics. When you're looking at the Latino community, for me, I felt like the question really was, how do I do this? Right? If you can ask the question, and or I'm sorry, if you can answer that question for the Latino community, how do I do this? And what I mean by that is, when you look at the home ownership rate continuously moving up, right? When you're looking at the population growth, which in the Latino community is 23% over the last, uh, from 2000 to 2019, right? How do I do this? It's not that we don't think we should buy homes. It's not that we're not, we don't want to buy homes. We're looking for the mechanisms to buy homes. We're looking for the levers to pull. I mean, that was the reason why an ITIN product was created in the first place. If you look at an ITIN product, ITIN, Individual Tax Identification Number, that's a loan product, a mortgage product that's out there where a, a lender can provide mortgage for a person who, while may not have their documentation properly to be a permanent resident alien or a U.S. citizen, they have a tax identification number so that they can pay taxes and show whatever it is that the government wants. But now is a lever that, a mechanism that can be used, that can be pulled for the Latino population who knows that they can't want to buy. I came here to buy. I didn't come here to rent, right? And I also want to, and this was significant from one of the presentations that uh, Mr. Vallejos had. When he did the study, he did the, uh, uh, pulled the information from Think Now Information. Um, he said that the Latino community, when they buy a home, it's as much a statement as anything of I am here, right? We didn't come here to rent. We came here to pull some trigger, uh, pull some levers. What are the things that I can do? And so for the Latino community, it's how do I do this? We tend to be more entrepreneurial in nature, so our income isn't always traditional W-2, right? We, have, we own a lot of our own businesses um, across the country, so how do I use that to be able to buy? How do I do this? What are the levers that I can pull? What are the mechanisms? And if you as a marketer can answer that when you're targeting the Latino community, if you can answer that question, I think that's where you're gonna gain traction. For the black community, the question, is this even for me? Is home ownership something for me? Because I've, you know, you got a lot of things going on in the last few years that have been surfaced, right? A lot of studies have been done, a lot of presentations have been done regarding redlining, uh, regarding covenants, understanding how, uh, um, you know, planning commissions are putting in zoning laws that show racial disparities or that imp uh, create racial disparities. Things like that. So in the black community, there's a lot of questions of, is home ownership, is it even for me? Right? And you can see that in the results. The home ownership rate is low. Even in Minneapolis, 25% is the home ownership rate. That's incredibly low, but that's opportunity. So when you're marketing to the black community, the question that you need to answer is, is this even for me? And the answer is yes. Damn right it is. This belongs to you. You've, you've, this has been yours for so long and it's here. Let's take this, right? And so if you can answer that question in your marketing, you'll gain traction in the, in the black community. The answer here for the Asian community 
it doesn't quite match up with the numbers that I, that I put out there, right? It has more to do with non-income, non-credit uh, 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 score, non-personal finances. The question here, I feel like when reading the reports from, the, uh, from ARIA, um, is where can I buy? Where can I do this? Where can I buy a home? Because since the COVID economy hit, since the COVID pandemic hit, the increase in hate crimes against Asians has skyrocketed. When you're looking at the Asian population, they are not, they, they gotta ask, where do I buy a home where I'm even safe? I got the money, I got the mortgage readiness, I'm, a, I'm able to, I got the income, I got the stability, I got the desire, I'm showing it that I have the capability, but where the heck do I buy a home where I can feel safe? And so if you can target that and answer that question, where can I buy where I feel safe, where my kids are going to be safe because of the, all of the anti-Asian hate crimes that have gone on. There's like 2 million instances in two-year period since the COVID hit. 2 million instances of anti-hate crime that has been reported. And that's just what's been reported. And this goes on in all the communities, not just San Francisco, and, and Los Angeles and Houston and New York, which are predominant, where predominantly larger uh, Asian communities are. But Stevens Point, Wisconsin, right? The Monk mon community out there got hit because the guy's out hunting and then he gets shot, right? So where can I live? Where can I do my thing as far as home ownership where I can feel safe? So I feel like if you can answer these questions with your marketing, in each of these communities, you'll be able to gain that traction, share, uh, that traction and you'll be able to get move back and forth between the communities as your marketing budget allows, right? And so these are the reports that I pulled. You can pull them up. It's uh, NAREP, the State of Hispanic Home Ownership. Um, you've got ARIA, the State of Asian America. You've got the State of, His of Housing in Black America. And then you have the National Association of Realtors, which has a snapshot that they pull out. These are, these are publications that come out every year. So it has new information every year. This isn't a five-year five deal. This is every year, so it's at your disposal. Take a look at it, pull out the information that you need, understand the story. Um, before I leave, though, before I wrap it up, there's a couple of last thoughts that I want to uh, provide in the in, in, in understanding the multicultural piece or the multicultural marketing. When it goes to, when you start putting marketing dollars, don't split the pot. Don't say, I got a hundred bucks for multicultural marketing and the Asian community can have 33 and the Hispanic community can have 33 and the, and the black community can have 33. Create your own budget for each one of those communities. You take the Hispanic community, right? Like I just said, consistent growth in the home ownership rate. Like I just said, 70% of all new homeowners are gonna be Latino for the next 20 years. That is not an emerging market. That is mainstream. That is driving the recovery. A lot the money for that. Don't split the pot. Don't make that mistake that's been, been done for the last 20 years. Even as recent as two weeks ago, I'm sitting down in front of somebody and have, I'm providing a presentation. And the comment comes back. Well, I'm going to be told that I need to, you know, how much is this? And I'm going to be told that I need to spend a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. And I was like, I'll tell you what, if you're not going to put the whole pot towards it, then don't do it, right? That's my personal opinion, but I think the numbers can show that. Secondly, my last thought is, what is the common denominator? This. This is where the attention is at, right? This is where the attention is at. And our generation, society, whatever you want to call it, it's not that we have, a, and I heard somebody else say this, a, a, another a, a presenter, another marketer. It's not that we have a lack of attention. Right? Our attention spans aren't the problem. If the attention span wasn't the problem, uh, 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 Game of Thrones wouldn't be watched in one sitting. Right? 
We know how to sit there for long hours of time, many hours of time, and create couch divots. Okay? <laughs> so it's not the attention. It's the question of whether or not your story sucks. Okay? If your story's not good, they're not going to stop. Okay? Answer those questions. And I bet you you'll get them to stop swiping. They'll stay there a little bit longer, and you'll gain that market share. Thank you. I appreciate it.